Go to Genesis chapter 1. Verse 26. And I'm going to read from there. And the Bible says, And God said, Let's make the man in our image after likeness, and let them have dominion over the fish, over the sea, over the flow, air, over the cattle, over the earth, over every creepy thing upon the earth. So God created the man on his own image, the image of God. In the image of God was created him, male and female, create he them. I was thinking when I was reading this part of the Bible. On the love of God to us, the love of God to create the man and create it in a way. To be like him. And, and that to be like him. I like it. I like it to be like him. Image of him. I was thinking what is image? What is image? And, and meantime that I was thinking what is image? Image become reflection. Reflection of something. It's like when you go to the mirror. It's not you but it's your reflection. It's somebody that he looks like. Like you. It's the image. It's the reflection. And when I was thinking about this, I was, I was thinking, well, God, if I'm a reflection of you in earth, what a joy to be your son. What a joy to serve you on anything. Because, man, he can create, he create everything. He created the fish. He created everything what it moved on earth. And, and, but on the man put a, a lot of emphasis and he says he was created like him. So I said, well, we are important for him. We are important for him. And, and thinking on that reflection, then I said, well, how do we can describe ourselves? What is the difference from, from one person to another person when we become Christians, moving to the New Testament, when we become Christians to serve the Lord? What is the difference between one person to another person? I was ready to take a plane few days ago to Veracruz. And meantime that I was ready to get the plane to Veracruz, I went to the newsstand and get the newspaper. I was reading the newspaper and all the news, it was just bad news. Everything was just killing. Everything was just terrible. And out of the sudden, I said, I'm going to move. And I went to the curtain space. And I was watching those curtains drawing and all that. And out of the sudden, I saw five gentleman so five pictures that he says find the correct gentleman or the one that it's correct so I said well I'm gonna look and I get my pen and I scratch one I said this one is missing this I get the other one I, this one is missing this this one is missing this and then finally he said this is the correct one yes I find the correct one I took the plane but when I'm in the plane, you know, you know how God works. I mean, sometimes he used the small things to talk to you. He used, I mean, sometimes you, you think that you're going to hear the big preacher or somebody. And sometimes God used the small things to talk to you. So I was in the plane, sitting on the plane, ready to go to Veracruz and preach. And I'm there and I'm there. And, and out of the sudden, the voice of God came to me, came to me and said, Hey, how do you defeat or how do you find the difference with, between one person that love me to another one. I see. It's simple. If he has the Bible, he's Christian. He's different. And then the voice of God says, no. Well, if he has a, a nice suit, clean card, nice person, that, that is, he says, no. I said, God, now I'm guessing. I'm guessing who is the person that loves you. Because, I mean, I said the one that is well dressed, the one that is nice and clean and cut. You said, no, the one that had the Bible. I said, well, the one that has the little fish in the back of the truck. <laughs> he says, no. 
And then all of a sudden, the voice of God again came to me and said, hey, it's the one that served me. The one that served me. That used any single space to serve me. It's the, my image. My image on earth. Whenever you find somebody that is Christian, you're going to find him, her, serving the Lord at any space. He's going to use any little, any little conversation, any little space to talk to somebody and say, can I help you? To give just a smile, to say to them, hey, God bless you. How are you? Do you have a church? I said, God. I mean, it's so simple. Why, why in 25 years I never thought about that? Sometimes we have to preach a lot of big sermons. Sometimes we have to preach different point of view. And, I, and when this one, I said, God, it's so simple to know the difference between one person that loves you and those that are going to start loving God. It's those that do something for you. I want to talk about that because it's a reflection. I was thinking about Jesus Christ. I was thinking how Jesus Christ came to earth and do the serving. The serving part is very important for the church. I was seeing all the miracles that happened in this house. And I just said, God, that is why his faith pleases God. I have so many troubles sometimes. Sometimes the devil came against it. Sometimes the devil try the worst things and still the church still work, working, the still open. When I heard the, the testimony this morning, I said, wow. Imagine, I mean, any, 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 everybody can have trouble, but faith pleases God having problem. Well, faith pleases God. No, God has a powerful God and has faith. Can you say Amen. He has faith. Uh, 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 we was trained on faith. And, and even though that I was no part of from this church. But I was part of the television. Because every time that the television starts. Carlos Ortiz I click. Ah, let me be prepared. And I remember those stories. I remember those teachings. I remember even the way that he moved. He talks. And, and he was so powerful. But today you have to act in the same faith. You have to act in the same faith. But what is going to make a difference in how the church is going to grow in the next year? I have a word that is powerful for you. This coming year, it's going to be a great year for this church. Amen. And how is it going to be a different year from this year? Well, it's very simple. You guys have exceeded all the limits. You have moved through faith. You have do a lot of stuff. But this year... You're going to move to do the second mile on serving. I, I came. I came to this, this church. I came one day and I just came to see. And I saw a lot of people working in there, uh, serving, giving food to the people that need and, and, and trying to do something. But I said, God, can do these people do the extra mile? Do these people are ready to go the extra mile to do something more powerful? Do these people are ready? Because you know what? Uh, God... Teach me that we can do better every time. That we cannot go back and, and try to start again because we already start. That every time that we move forward, we move forward and be, we believe that we're going to do better. 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 So I went to the scripture and said, God, if I'm going to serve you, how am I going to do it? And he gave me a simple answer. Serving. Serving. I went to the Bible. And if you want to go with me, you're going to go and find how simple it was to go from nothing to something powerful that it's called right now gospel. Something that it was from scratch for something that is so powerful around the world today that it's called gospel. Jesus started the ministry with nothing but service. Nothing but service. Every time that he moved to any place, any time that he moved to somebody, he was doing something for them. He was doing something for the people. And the people, uh, they immediately, they knew that it was something different from the religious people. First uh, thing that I want to talk to you, people need fit, uh, food. He was ready to give food. He, that it was service. He was preaching to them. If you go to Matthew chapter 8. 
verse 2 and 3. And the Bible says, and Behold, they came, sorry about it. The, the, the second part of the point. People came to, to him and he was preaching. He was preaching to these people. And, and out of the sudden, the time went fly. And when the, the message went on and on and on and he was teaching to the people, out of the sudden, they was hungry. And Jesus told the disciples, give them something to eat. Give them food to them. When I was watching this part, I said, what? God, you are doing something in here that is called service. You are doing something that it's called be always ready to serve the people. He told the disciples, go and, and give food to them. And, and I said, it was so easy to say, go and give food to them when it's maybe 200, maybe 500. Believe me, we do a lot of stuff sometimes, and sometimes to invite the people to come to the tent, I put a big advertisement outside, and it says, free food today. Sometimes I regret, I say, God, give me a better wise ideas. Because out of the sudden, the tent is full. And when you have the tent full, you, you need to be prepared to give food to everybody. So sometimes we cook something the first day to invite everybody to come. The second time, it's going to be easy for them to come. So 5,000, it will be easy to feed. I mean, 500, but 5,000. Nowhere, no Walmarts, no stores. It will be difficult. But God, he was, he, he was not worried about it because he knew that the people that he had, the people that he was training, he was ready to serve. And when you, once you are ready to serve, God is going to be a God that provides everything for you to give you as a tools for help the people, to help the people. I mean, you don't worry about how I'm going to do it tomorrow. You don't worry how you're going to feed the people. I mean, you just prepare yourself to serve. You just prepare to yourself. Jesus says, okay, you are my image. You are my reflection. Do the same. If you are my reflection, you're going to be doing the same. Don't worry about what, how you're going to do it. Don't worry about how, how it's going to happen. I don't understand how, how God made some things. Believe me. Sometimes I prayed and I believe. I said, God, help me on this. I, sometimes I said, God, I need this. One day, I, I mean... The preachers sometimes were, I don't know if too excited or sometimes with too many faith. I said, God, I need a tent to see the thousand. And I called one person and said, 60,000, another one, 30,000. I said, I don't know, but you're going to give me a tent. Why do I need a tent? I said, well, so simple because I need to go and tell the people that God loves them. So I went to preach, and I went, I went to preach to open field, and I was watching the tent in the field. And I said, God, how are you going to do it to give me a tent for these people? Because sometimes we want to think. We want to think, but if we are reflection or we are image of God, God is the provider. We are not the one that generates the money. We're not, we don't worry. I mean, we just put whatever we have, God. This is what I have. I, I was ready to get the tent, and I met a pastor, North Carolina, and I said, Pastor, I need a tent for a thousand people. He says, Well, the cost is 30,000. I said, Yeah, but I don't have the 30,000. But I will be ready. He says, Well, whenever you're ready, just give me a call. I said, Yeah. So I went to pray. I went to believe. The next few weeks, he called me. Are you ready for the tent? I said, yes, I'm ready for the tent. Do you have the money? I said, almost. Almost. You don't worry about, I mean, those, uh, the number that he mentioned, 18,000. I don't know how Rick handled it to remember the exact pennies. But. You don't worry about it. You just give the Lord what you have. And I said, God, I don't have that, 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 that 30,000, but you're going to give me the tent, right? He says, yes, I told you. So I called the pastor and I said, I'm ready. He says, okay, 
Tomás, I'm going to tell you something. You don't have to pay the 30,000. Somebody will request the tent and pay half of it. But he withdrew. He says he don't want the tent anymore. So it's paid half. I said, good. He says, well, the next thing at church, I call a church and I told about your ministry and they said that they're going to pay another amount. I said, good. We almost fulfilled the 30,000 then. He said, well, get your band, get over here and get the tent. Bring your money. I said, okay, I will be there three days from now. So I prepare my band, I go to North Carolina, I put an envelope and I put an amount of money. I said, God, I don't have more. If I will have more, I will put more, but I don't have more. I went to North Carolina, get to North Carolina and talk to the pastor. And the pastor said, I hope that you have the money. I said, I have the money. I put my envelope in the table. And this is not kidding, not playing. I put my envelope. And he says, I expect that at least you have $2,000 in that envelope. I say, you know what? It's the only $2,000 that I have. It's in there. How do God knew that I have $2,000? And that he was going to say, at least $2,000, I don't know. How God do things, I don't know. Don't ask me how he do it. But whenever you serve the Lord, whenever you are ready to serve the Lord on any area, do whatever you have on hand. Do whatever you need to do because God is ready to come to you and help you on any ways. In any ways. How are we going to serve the Lord? We don't have money to do. Don't worry about it. Serve the Lord. Do something. Do something for the Lord. Every day that you move forward, you need to do something for the Lord. What, what Jesus, Jesus was doing on those days? He came to, serve, to heal the people. I said, God, that is so simple. That is so simple. Uh, when I was starting to preach the gospel, uh, I was 18 years old. And I went to preach and I said, God, I'm going to preach John 3.16. I don't have a problem. John 3.16 is so simple. I, do, I will not be any problem on that. But all of a sudden I get to the place where I was going to preach that day. And then a small bus wagon was around the city. Say, hey, come for your miracle. Bring the blind. Bring the, any person that is any condition. The people with cancer. Bring it to the place. And God is going to heal them. I said, God. Everything sounds nice. I was just 18 years old. I said, God, everything sounds so nice to be a preacher, to be on the road, to be anywhere, but to heal the people. I go to Matthew 8, 2, and, and behold, came a leper and worshiped him, saying, Lord, if you want, you can make me clean. If you want. And Jesus responded, I want. I want. Be clean. I said, God, that is so simple for you. But for me, I'm human. How am I going to do that? Out of the sun, there was a lot of people with muletas. I don't know how to say it in Spanish. And wheelchairs and all that. And they said, and now, I was remember when brother introduced me. And they say, and now, Brother Tomas Reyes is going to be preaching the word of God. Get ready. I was like, do I go? Oh, oh, what do I do? Because there is a lot of sick people. I give my first step. And when I was walking through, God came to me and said, Tomas, before you preach, I want to tell you something. Are you worried for that people? I said, God. I'm a man. I said, God, how are we going to do it? There's, well, I'm going to teach you something. I'm the one who heals, not you. Before you take the mic, always remember this. Remember that the glory is mine. The work is yours. 
So from that day on, I start serving the Lord, and I have seen so many miracles. So whenever you have to serve the Lord, you don't have to ask for somebody to come and help you. You just go and lay hands. Lay hands. So simple, pastor. So simple. You have to believe. The first call uh, after that, that, that service, I was in the office, and, and, and it was not my office. It was my pastor's office. He went to preach to Mexico, and he says, any calls, you responded. The first call was somebody that had cancer. And she was crying like all the way. I said, ma'am, can you, can, you, can you just be quiet for a minute? She says, Tomas, do you know they told me that I have three days more to live? Do you know what it means? Do you know what it means? I said, yes, but, but you need to understand. Do you want for me to pray for you? And again, oh. I said, well, are you going to stop, yes or no? She says, yes. I'm going to ask you something. This happened. 24 years ago. Do you believe in God? Do you believe in God? She says yes. Do you believe that he can heal you? She says yes. Okay. Then he's done. God. Give her a miracle. And she said just like that. <laughs> just like that. She came to the valley. Because he was turned to the husband and came to the valley to die. Next day, he went, when she arrived to the valley, she went to the hospital just to say that she was here. And they started checking all the exams that they do, the blood exam and all that. And they said, who are you? They said, who are you? She says, Olga Vasquez. I think we made a mistake on you. Because the papers that we have, it says that you have cancer. She says, yes, I went for treatment and they said I have three days to live. <laughs> they said, no, maybe we made a mistake. Because the papers that we have, the exams that we made to you, it don't belong for somebody that had cancer. You are clean. You are clean. I will never forget because she come and she says, Tomas, you know what happened? They said that they made a mistake on me. Ah, don't tell me that. I prayed and you believed. She says, yes, but they said they made a mistake. No, there was no mistake because your husband can testify. She had a big smell of death. Her body was dying. So what is the part for me to serve the Lord that I have to believe? I have to go and tell the people. It's something so simple. If I'm image of him, I have to go and pray for the people. Because it's not me the one that heals. It's him. I'm just the reflection of him on earth. I have just to go and put the hands and believe that God is going to do the miracle. <laughs> what? Jesus was doing here on earth. It was so simple. He served every day. He served. Even he was ready to go up. And out of the sudden, he called the disciples and said, Hey, I'm going to wash your feet. Can you imagine that part? Because, I mean, sometimes we, I mean, I, I'm going to be honest. I, 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 I was with preachers, and the preachers sometimes get a little bit. And, and one day, one of my friends says, Tomas, you have to throw away your band, man. That is ugly. I said, well, but that is my protection. You don't go with me to Mexico. He said, but you have to have a, a nice car. I don't have nothing against. You're going to give me the car. I drive the car. <laughs> but sometimes we put all the efforts on the level that we look. No, it's too so simple. We are servants. We are servants. We are servants of the Lord. We, we just came to do something that he sent us to do. And it's so simple. He went to say, hey, I'm going to wash your feet. And, and, and Peter immediately replied, hey, 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 hold on, Jesus, hold on, hold on. 
you, 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 you don't have to do that. I will do it. He said, no, I have to do it. No, 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 no. You will not do it with me. Well, if I will not do that, you don't have part with me. Oh, oh. He says, oh, oh, she says, no, no, no. Then watch me the whole. I want to be with you. What it was that part? What it was that teaching? It's so simple. The teaching of Jesus every single day was service, 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 service. We are not too big. We are not, I mean, we are just simple people. We are Christians. And as a Christian, we act every day and we serve another people. And when another people know that we are servants, they want to be around you. They want to join with you in the church because they know that it's a different church. It's not a church that just preach. It's a church that serves every single day of life. Hmm. I was thinking what happened to the service what happened to the service I don't know if you have noticed but services have been removed from many places services have been removed from many places the world it's teaching us I said it wrong The world is teaching us something that we have we will not accept. I remember the old days. I remember the old days. I came to US many years ago. I'm not too old, but I remember the old days when you get to the gas station and somebody came and pumped the gas to you and clean, check your air and the tires, clean your windshield, and do some stuff. That was called service. That was called service. So the people that he was in there, he was trained. Hey, the client is always right. Have you heard that? The client is always right. Something happened. Something happened out of the sudden. You go to the gas station and there is no more people to serve you. You go and pump your own gas. It doesn't matter if it's freezing. You go out and put your gas and... Sometimes you go to the work and then you smell that, oh, yes. They remove it. Then out of the sudden they remove the service. I, I, I used to have a banker. I'm not rich. And, and many years ago I used to have a lot of problems. But I used to have my, my, my banker. I don't know if you had gone through those process that a balance check. You are invited to our next church service this Sunday at 11 a.m. Come to Faith Pleases God, hear an inspiring word, experience the presence of God, and claim your miracle in the name of Jesus. I want to invite you to Faith Pleases God. I know Jesus will change your life. You can also watch us live online at faithpleasesgod.com. Faith Pleases God Church. All are welcome.